Hi everyone, my name is Marty Guthmiller, uh, CEO at Orange City Area Health System, bringing you today the 36th edition of our COVID-19 community briefing. Um, I'm, I don't have an update of the local scoreboard for today. Um, basically, we're falling into a routine now where that scoreboard is really updated weekly. And so I'll be providing you at least a weekly update on the local scoreboard unless um, something merits uh, more disclosure. Uh, right now, our, our numbers on Monday of this week were 6.4% positive. Uh, we don't anticipate uh, that changing or that it's changed much since Monday. And so we'll, we'll provide you with this information, but it'll probably be now on a weekly basis. The other information I can provide uh, as frequently as uh, we need to, and, and I will do that starting now. <clears throat> First of all, the Sioux County uh, stats, and, and everything today is a little bit of an uptick. So um, if there's a trend today, it's a little bit uh, in the negative in terms of, of more stuff going on. Uh, not dramatic, but, but a little bit. Sioux County, we have 490 positives now, so we're creeping up on 500. Um, that's of 3,086 tested. So in Sioux County, we've tested one out of every 11 residents. The positive rate in Sioux County has gone up a little bit to 15.9%. It was 157 so again, not dramatic, but if anything, it, it, it's moving up a little bit. We move now to Region 3, which, as you know by now, is the 20 northwest Iowa or northwest um, counties in the state of Iowa. Region 3 currently has 35 patients hospitalized with COVID-19. That is up uh, from Monday at 30, so we've had five more hospitalizations. Uh, nine people in the ICU in these 20 counties, that is up from eight. And we've had five patients admitted in the last 24 hours. The state of Iowa has had 1,200 additional positives um, since Monday, uh, but that's in about uh, 15,000 tests uh, performed as well. So in Iowa, we've had uh, 32,856 positives out of 350,092 tests. Uh, one out of every nine Iowans has now been tested, and the positive rate is 9.4 percent. So there, there is no change in the positive rate uh, in the state of Iowa. The other measure that uh, I like to look at is the acuity of the patient. So how sick are our patients getting? How sick are those positives um, getting? One of the measures that we can look at for that, which is pretty reliable, is the number of hospitalizations. The number of hospitalizations in, in Iowa since Monday has gone up quite a bit. Um, uh, we're at currently 157. Uh, hospitalized COVID-19 patients in the state of Iowa. That is up from 129 uh, on Monday. I looked at that a, a little bit in terms of where that's happening, and it looked like there was a couple counties uh, about as far away from us as possible down in the far southeast corner. Uh, Lynn and Scott counties have jumped up a little bit. Again, not dramatic, but a little bit, uh, but, but they do account for some of that growth from uh, 129 to today, 157. Uh, closer to home, we do have uh, two uh, patients hospitalized in Sioux County. That was one on Monday. We do have three patients in Plymouth County, uh, and, th and that is consistent uh, with uh, the number on Monday as well. So uh, three on Monday and three today. O'Brien and Lyon counties remain at zero. Clay and Dickinson counties remain at zero. BV County has dropped from four to two. So BV is, is uh, almost COVID-19 patientless at this point, um, which is good news, uh, BV at two. Woodbury County has stayed steady at 14 from Monday's number, and Polk County is at 29 
uh, which is down from 31. So again, a little bit of a mixed message there, uh, a, a little bit of a growth rate again, um, which is, is, as I mentioned, a measure of the acuity of the sick, uh, sickness of, of patients. Also since Monday, we've had 18 additional deaths in the state of Iowa. So when you look at this body of, of stats here, um, we've had better days when, when we've reported these, but again, no, no reason to push the panic button. Um, but if anything, it is ticking up a, a little bit. And once again, a reminder that um, this thing isn't over, that the marathon continues. And, but, but now, as, as I mentioned before, at the same time, so does life. And so, uh, you know, our message to you uh, from the health system here is to continue to use common sense, to social distance um, as, as much as you can, uh, be, be well aware of your environment and the situations that you're in. Uh, remember hand washing, hand sanitizing, masking, when the 615 rule cannot be adhered to. Um, and again, be grace-filled in, in how you go about your life at this point. I guess at all points, right? Um, but what, I, what I'd like to do also just mention a couple things today. Um, our IgG clinic continues at the walk-in clinic, um, noon to 4 p.m., Monday through Fridays. There's a $60 charge for that. Again, the IgG test is a serology test. It's a blood test that tests for the coronavirus antibodies. Um, so um, that test is available. You don't need to uh, call ahead or have an appointment. Uh, you can show up at the walk-in clinic in the Holland Plaza Theater um, and get that test done. Uh, we've had uh, many this week that have been done um, and it's simply available uh, if, if you uh, would find that of value. Also, I was passed uh, uh, along a message on rides. So particularly with uh, the folks listening to this message uh, who are local, um, rides, which is a, a van service, um, transport service here in town, they will be starting again on July 20. Um, they will be taking reservations uh, only in the mornings, initially as um, it's kind of slow for them. So if you, if you need uh, a ride on rides, um, good news, starting again on July 20, call uh, the number there and um, get a reservation. And again, it's only available in the mornings. It will be free uh, initially, and, and they haven't determined when they're gonna go back to the uh, $1 per stop uh, fee structure, but initially it's free, so take advantage of that if, if you can. Also, if you have a bunch of uh, tickets on hand that uh, you had previously uh, before rides shut down, uh, those are most likely expired at this point. If you want to uh, get a refund, I think you can get half of a refund back. Um, send those expired tickets back to rides, include your name and address, and they will return half of that fee to you. So um, just passing along that information um, from rides. Um, just a reminder also, and finally, um, to keep that engine tuned of yours. Um, again, uh, things like uh, lose some weight, uh, make sure your diabetes is controlled, uh, high blood pressure um, adhered to in terms of uh, medications or lifestyle. Um, just, just keep that wellness checks, um, wellness screenings, all those kinds of things. Uh, keep that engine tuned because as you know well by now, um, that's the best way to fight off uh, this virus when in essence, inevitably, we all will get it at some point. Um, so we want to be as ready for that as possible if and when we do uh, get that virus and we want it to be a non-event, uh, which it is for many. Um, not for all, but for many, it is. And so uh, please remember to keep that in mind as well. Um, and also, if you have any questions, uh, probably the best number to call here at the health system is 737-2000. That's our clinic number. 
um, normal business hours, uh, generally speaking, they can route you uh, to the right place and they can uh, also answer a lot of questions for you at the time, particularly if you have any questions on screenings or, or uh, the clinic or anything like that. So um, thanks again for joining us today. Appreciate that, appreciate your support and your loyalty uh, always, but particularly during this time. Um, so again, uh, our little sign off here is uh, stay vigilant, stay strong, and above all, stay healthy. Thanks again for joining us.